Hey, greetings. Uh, I want to uh, share with you uh, some of my conviction. And uh, basically, this is why uh, one, of, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I will be voting for Donald Trump. Now, uh, before you all get yourselves all upset, uh, I do not hold a 501c3. So, you know, there's no fear to go ahead and talk straight to the people in America and God's people especially why out of the choice of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump I pick Donald Trump and I will be voting for Donald Trump regardless of all the things regardless of all the things uh, you know the other peripheral uh, stuff by choice so I'm looking beyond the offense, like the things that, that they use to make people be offended, the gotcha stuff. I'm looking beyond the lawyering where the lawyers get on and they squabble in front of the people with legalistic things. I'm looking beyond um, where the media just picks, picks, picks at different things and these are professional speakers that have attained to where they've attained to because they master the English language. Well I can tell you someone else that's got a good handle on the English language and that's Barack Obama. So he can sure silver tongue talk real good and let's look at Barack Obama again. So Outwardly, his speech is one thing, but inwardly, he's rotten to the core. So, anyway, but this is not about picking on Barack Obama, who shows no sign of being a Christian at all, has not, has zero fruit even after eight years, has not in any way brought Christian leaders around him to counsel him, who opens the doors to Islam, which is an other god, right, with all their Kaaba idols and their false prophet Muhammad, okay? Now, I don't say this to offend Islamic people or anybody else, or even people that don't have faith. Um, but the facts are the facts. It's just the absolute eternal truth. Now, one of the reasons... And again, I'm not, I'm just telling Islam and all of you the straight out truth. Why does Islam act like it acts? Because that's what's in their writings. So even what ISIS is doing is in their writings. They're simply doing what's in their book. And people can tell you, now there may be Islamic people in America, Muslims in America, that don't subscribe to all of that. In fact, inside of Islam, you have another school of thought that came later that says that's the starting point. It was some kind of somewhat of a reform, but it really wasn't. But if you want to get, if you basically talk to Islamic people, they believe that they're supposed to do everything that Muhammad said. I mean, look at what they do. Uh, they riot. If They riot and they try to kill people. If... Uh, if you take the name of Muhammad in vain, or if you paint a cartoon or something, they think they're supposed to shoot you. Now, some say that's not Islam. That is Islam. But one of the tenets of their faith, one of the strong things of the Islamic faith, and Obama, uh, well, all the, he says, that's not Islam? He doesn't know Islam then, does he? It's in the writings. Or is he just a deceiver, which is a tenet of their faith, that they're allowed to do when they're trying to take over the heathen? In other words anyone who doesn't believe Islam. Anyway, that's not really all what I want to get into here. And I'm not against Muslims who aren't trying to do jihad beyond jihad in their personal life, meaning that their jihad is to bring about truth, eternal truth, and the seeking of God within and the conforming to God within themselves. But when they want to go external and kill people because they're not conforming uh, to Islam, then that's when I then that's when I say uh, you should not be allowed to be in America. 
uh, and you should be eradicated from the earth. And, you know, one day all those will, along with all other wicked. It's not just Islam. But let me get on. Now, one of the things, and I don't want it to get lost. That's about five minutes. I don't want to get lost in, in, in the whole thing here. One of the reasons that I will vote for Donald Trump is this. In First Timothy, uh, basically I want to talk about what is, what is the purpose of the church in the world. The purpose of the church in the world is to preach the gospel to every creature. What is the purpose of the church in the world? What is Jesus' command? Preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe is condemned already. Now, what is the purpose of the church in the world? And what is the commandment of the Lord? It is to make disciples of the nations. Make disciples of the nations. In other words, every nation is to be discipled. Every tribe to be discipled. Every tongue to be discipled. So in standing, when I look at, here we have two people to lead the civil government. You see, this is not a church elder, right? We're not looking for the qualifications of a church elder. It'd be great if they had them, but they don't. It'd be great if they both had those. And then what do you do? You still have to have the mind of God, don't you? Um, but they don't. They don't have qualifications to be an elder in the church. Civil government, the Bible says, and we'll get to this in a minute, Romans 13 is to be the sword of God. But let's go back to Timothy here. He says, therefore, Timothy. So what is the purpose? To preach the gospel to every creature, to make disciples of the nations, right? To proclaim or preach repentance and remission or repentance for the remission of sins, right? That's our responsibility and a command what we are supposed to be doing in America, in Kenya, in India, in Pakistan. Doesn't matter where we are, that's what we are to do. But I'm talking specifically why I will vote for Donald Trump. I pick Donald Trump. The hand of God is on Donald Trump. And I will not pick Hillary Clinton. Now all Americans are going to make a decision. And we're going to suffer. We're going to either be blessed for the, for the purpose. We're either going to be blessed by our choice. Or we're going to be cursed by our choice. If you want to get right to the black and white of it. The the righteousness and the and the lawlessness of it. We're either going to be we either going to get blessings out of it or we're not. You can take a look at Barack Obama. He talked good. You know, no foul language out of his mouth. Look, it looks good. Everything on the surface looks good, but all these policies are rotted. They're rotted. They are antichrist. They are lawlessness. They are against the living God. Uh, he's done things to destroy the covenant of the land. The Constitution is the covenant of this land, the United States of America. And it was sealed in the blood of the people that brought it about. In the blood of all those who upheld it through the centuries. That is the covenant of the land. And God honors covenants. And so, there is a vehicle within it that you can change the covenant. But it is not by usurping the covenant. And it is not by destroying the covenant. Furthermore, all people in the United States, when they join the military, whether officers or enlisted, when they are sworn in to the House of Representatives or the Senate, or even the presidency or vice presidency, they swear an oath to uphold the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Therefore, if they go against that covenant, if they usurp that covenant, then they are oath breakers, then they are covenant breakers, and God does not like covenant breakers. Marriage a covenant. God upholds the covenant. People break the covenant. God's not happy about broken covenants.
He made a covenant with Israel. And all this stuff. And the reason they were out of land, because God scattered them. He said, because you rebelled against me and did all this wickedness, your divinations and all your idols and your other gods, I'm going to scatter you to all the nations, but when it's time to restore you, I'm going to bring you back, I'm going to set you back in the land. And so he has in our generation. And I can get more on that, but that's another reason why I will vote for Donald Trump, and we will, I'll touch on that perhaps another time. Concerning Israel and Jerusalem, in God's work in the earth now in this hour, and there is a direct judgment upon anyone who interferes with it. That's another reason I'll pick Donald Trump, but I'll say that for another one. I'm already going way longer than what I thought I would have on this. So, one of the reasons is that the purpose of the church is to preach the good news, preach the gospel to every creature, the good news of the kingdom, right? And to bring people to peace, to have them reconcile with God before God steps in and destroys all the wicked. Amen? That's the end of the gospel. It isn't only about the love of God. It is about the coming kingdom and that which is coming that will put down all lawlessness, all rebellion, all anarchy. Everything that's opposed to God. Right? Now, so, so to make disciples of the nations, that means teach them the things of the Lord and have them come into the learning and the teaching and submission to the teaching of God. Not by force, not by cutting their heads off, but by giving them the words. Amen. And then by a free act of their will, they decide, I'm going to go, I'm going to follow the Lord. All right. Amen. So there is, the Bible tells us that there is a atmosphere that that works better in. There is a uh, a God-ordered, heavenly, if you will, spiritual atmosphere that works in, and it directly per per pertains to civil governance. Now, let's look at God's desire. First Timothy chapter 2. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So he says, first off, I got all these kinds of ways that I want you to stand in the gap on behalf of all mankind, all men, male and female, young and old, white and brown, yellow, red, tan, beige in between. All right. Then he says, for all men. So first is for all men. See, God's concern is for all men. Then he says, and for kings. Why? Because how the king is directly affects the people. In Proverbs, the wisdom of God says that if the wicked rules, the people groan. But if the righteous rules, the people rejoice. He says so for, all, for kings and all who are in authority. So kings... That's speaking of the ruling civil governance, the highest place. But it says for all who are in authority, and that means the prominent places. So that would include senators, representatives, cabinet people. That would include governors, right? Uh, state legislators, mayors, right? It would include all of those civil authorities. God has ordained them, and he has ordained a purpose. And we're going to see more here but also more we'll see the why of it here but we're also going to see what authority that he's given them we're going to see that in Romans 13 that we he says for kings and for all authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life that we might have a steady orderly prosperous life Peace and tranquility. Why? Because in that atmosphere, it's easier for that discipling of the nations to go forward. As long as we don't get caught up in the comfort of materialism, material ease, and Baal mammon, right? For the forever 
chasing of more material. I mean, we, we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add all these things to us. The house of God is not to chase those things. We are to chase the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he adds the things. And through the discipleship and the application of discipleship, we press into the kingdom of God. We press into his righteousness. Amen. And he adds to his covenant people. Amen. For kings and for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. In all godliness and reverence, which the margin says dignity. That we might have a life of dignity. And he goes on and he says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is good and and acceptable. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect will. What's that perfect will? Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now when I'm looking, when I'm looking for civil leaders, I'm looking for God-fearing. I'm looking for those who will not trash the people of God. Because we have a mission to do. And with good civil leadership, it's easier for us to accomplish our mission. We still have to go after our mission, whether they're cooperative or not. So even if they're wicked, and even if they try to outlaw Christianity, even if they uh, tell you you can no longer preach or teach in this name of Jesus, we ought to obey God and not man. Amen? Nevertheless, we should believe God. He said, pray, pray, pray for all men and pray for the kings and pray for all those in those places, those uh, prominent places, so that this gospel of the kingdom can be preached to all nations, to be preached in all places, and then the end, the end of the age, the end of the devils running around loose, right? And the fullness of the kingdom come, and wickedness removed, and he will send his angels, and he will remove all that offends. He will remove all the wicked. He will remove all the lawless. Amen? See, the first thing is on the house of God judgment. The hypocrites get removed by the angels. Amen? Listen, you see the corruption being exposed in America. I'm going to guarantee you that within the church right now, Things are coming to the top. That's why you see so much apostasy. That's why you see so much apostasy. The, apost the apostasy and the heresy has been in there. But now it's coming to the top and it's being revealed. See, God's cleansing the church. God's cleansing America. Amen? He's trying to bring the church back. He's trying to bring America back. Not trying like he doesn't have the ability. But that's what he's in motion to do. Now, will we yield and will we cooperate? Or will we yield to what the devil is trying to do? The devil is trying to destroy the church, filling it with apostasy, filling it with seducing spirits, filling it with doctrines of demons, filling it with false apostles, filling it with false prophets, filling it with false evangelists, filling it with false pastors, filling it with false teachers, filling it with false relations. Amen? And, and interjecting evil spirits, Jezebel spirits, to seduce the people of God, to teach them falsely doctrines of devils so that when they chase them, the devil has them and destroy them. Destroy the light, destroy the salt in a nation, then there's nothing preserving the nation. The nation goes to hell. That's what's happened to America. The church has not been salt and light. We must be salt and light. God is cleaning the church. The fire of God is in the church. The impurities are coming up. The apostates are coming up. The heresies are coming up. The witchcraft is coming up. What, in the church witchcraft? Yeah, witchcraft is coming up. How, you say? Well, false gospel. Galatians 3 is witchcraft, bewitchment. Legalism is witchcraft. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Who are you to judge another man's servant? If they've turned to the Lord and come into Jesus, amen, if they've repented, who are you to bring up their past sins? It's God who's thrown them into the sea. 
and remove them as far as the east is to the west. How dare you, body of Christ? How dare you? You're portraying a false gospel to the world. Your legalism. That's legalism, my friend. It's not righteousness in the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's legalism. God's not about portraying an image. God is not ashamed of the wickedness and the sin that we've done in the past. What he wants is go your way and sin no more. From this point, go and sin no more. That's what he's after, isn't it? Now, God wants all men to be saved. Come on, we have an opportunity to portray what the gospel really is, and here we go, and we're getting all legalistic. Oh, somebody did something 20, 30 years ago, if they did it. And it's besides the point. It's not just that. It's This is a demonstration of whether we really hold to the truth of the gospel. Because, you see, if we're sitting there and we think, look what they did. They're so terrible. I can't vote for them because I'm a Christian. I can't, I can't get alongside them because I'm cleaner than them. I'm more righteous. Oh, more righteous than them. I'm cleaner. What? Is that self-righteousness? The only measure that we are to measure ourselves by is Jesus Christ. So we all fall short. Even now. I don't care how far, how long you've been in the Lord. If you were all perfected, you'd be, you'd be gone with the Lord. Man, you wouldn't be here. You'd be so far over into the heavenly thing, you'd just like disappear, man. You'd be raptured out of here. Come on. Let's go on. So, Thessalonians 2, the beginning, he says, right? First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks for all men, and then the kings and all those in authority, the prominent people that are in places of civil governance, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence with dignity. That we might live in dignity. You know when there's riots, there's no dignity. When there's gang banging on the streets, there is no dignity. You know, uh, when little kids are getting shot down on the street because people are shooting at each other because they think the other one disrespected them, that's not living in dignity. Okay, God wants to do something about that, okay? Hillary Clinton says, oh, they, they're justified and they, because they've been mistreated. I'm sorry they're not. If we can get in the whole thing, listen. You're not entitled to be unforgiving to someone. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, your Father in Heaven won't forgive you. Oh, it's because we were slaves and you weren't a slave. You're born in America. You weren't a slave. You know what? The only slavery is in your mind between your ears. Come on, man. Come out of that. Come out. My God, what a lie. For this is good, right? So pray, pray for all. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is good and acceptable to God our Savior. He wants this. Right? Why? Why? The why? who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants all men to be saved. Why does God want godly, God-fearing civil authorities that carry the sword and do exercise it against evildoers, we'll see that in Romans 13, who, who do exercise it against evildoers so that we might live in all quietness and dignity and that the gospel will go forth and people, the nation will be discipled, amen. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth, he said, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men and that's the man Jesus Christ. And he said, who gave himself a ransom to all to be testified in due time. He said, for which I am appointed a preacher and apostle, and is speaking the truth in Christ, and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere. Now, so, I said it several times, but 
this is the thing. And I thought this was going to be just a little quick little thing, and maybe I'll have to redo it and just make it a very little quick little thing. But God says, make every kind of prayer for all men. God's first thing is concerned about everybody. Who's concerned about everybody? Is Hillary Clinton concerned about everybody or is Donald Trump? Sorry, Donald Trump is the one that's concerned about everybody. Um, should I get into this? That I should get into another segment. I'm gonna I'm gonna just touch on this, but I'll but I'll probably build it out in a different segment. One of the things that Donald Trump has talked about is the inner city. See, that's where all this, this this where the devil's been working havoc. See, he got in there, and God ain't in there, and a lot of it's the church, you know. And uh, if you're looking for the civil government, no, you got to be looking for the church. The church has got to exercise spiritual authority. The nation's got to repent. You can't have custom and culture of Satan and practice things that are cursed and expect the blessing of God to be in the city. It's just not gonna. You 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 open up to the devil, you know. So, uh, homosexual doesn't start because people want to be sodomites, and uh, and of course the women is uh, you know not like that. That's one aspect of it. That's one aspect. Uh, but men with men, women with women, that's what the word homo means. They try to say gay, but it isn't gay. They perverted the word gay. Gay, when I grew up, the word gay meant you were happy. You were joyful. You had a spring in your step and you went happy down the street. You were gay. Now it means that you're homo sex lover. Now, homo is a Greek word. It means of the same kind. Like homo sapien of the same kind, human, you know, homo. You know, it's not this like, oh, you can't say that. We're offended. Get out of here, devil. Stop stealing words. And then, oh, that's not politically correct. What's politically correct? You mean to make human above the creator? So take away the biblical word, sex with the same kind, homosexual, and let's make it gay now. That's a perversion and a twisting. It's a deception. Now, without getting into that right now. So, pray for them. Pray for your leaders that we might live a quiet and peaceable life because God wants all men to be saved because the command is to preach to every creature. The command is to make disciples of your nation. All right. Now, let's go to Romans 13. And what else? Romans 13. Oh, let me just say one, one more thing on that. The prophet Ezekiel told us why the sins of Sodom and the sins of Sodom ended up in sodomy, homosexuality. Yeah, my little alarm going off. Sodomy, homosexuality and that, right? Well, there were men there. If men were with men, what were the women doing? And of course, Sodom, anyway, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but <laughs> so the, the prophet tells us because of the abundance of all things, because of idleness, because of pride and arrogance, because they forgot the poor and they forgot the needy. What are we to do with the poor and needy? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. Needy, when I did a word study, and it has the idea of a mental uh, incapacity to help oneself. So I think even drug addiction, people demonized could fall under that. Poor means a lack of things. Uh, but needy has an idea of some kind of infirmity that prevents them from being able to help themselves. That The drug addiction in this country now. Um, we're losing more people to drug addiction than we lost in the Vietnam War. Are you, are you serious? Are you listening? Another reason I'll vote for Donald Trump. The borders must be shut. Tons of poison coming over the borders. I'll, I'll maybe pick up that in another segment. 
But really, this one, I'm trying to talk to you about civil government and why we need a strong leader that will enforce the, the civil order so that all of us can live, all the rest of us that don't want to do wickedness can live in peace and tranquility so that it is an atmosphere where the gospel can go forward, so it is an as atmosphere where people can come to the Lord, so it is an atmosphere that all men can be saved, where they can be discipled in the Lord. Now, if you go over into an ISIS territory where the war is going on, if you go into Syria, how easy is it to win people to the Lord? Win the lost to the Lord over there. How easy is it to disciple them over there? You see, we want to have peace. We cannot allow. We will not, in the name of Jesus, have a breakdown of civil order. You know, six things God hates. Seven are an abomination to him. It's an abomination. Those who so strife amongst the brethren and cause division in this land. And there's many false reverends out there bringing on riots and pushing on people in buses to go in and stir up riots. God is not happy. Judgment begins at the house of God. Now, Romans 13. Let's go to Romans 13. God, again, is talking about civil authority and his purpose. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Now, God says, what is the civil authority that he wants and what's the purpose? For rulers, civil authorities, governing authorities, kings and all those prominent men, rulers are not a terror to good works. The gospel of the kingdom is good works. Obama is at enmity with the gospel of the kingdom. Hillary Clinton is at enmity with the gospel of the kingdom. And Donald Trump has publicly made himself a friend with the gospel of the kingdom. You need further proof? Look who he appointed as vice president. Look who he chose. God-fearing man. Look at who's around him getting counsel, giving him counsel. Godly men. So even though he may not be a Christian, or maybe he's a baby Christian, okay, a young in the Lord, and maybe doesn't have all of his godliness together yet, like I know so many of you do, regardless, standing in the counsel of godly men, applying the counsel of the godly men, amen? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Rulers are to be a terror to evil, but not to those who do good, not to those who do righteous. Let's 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 look at what's been going on in the land, right? At what godliness has been manifesting in the last eight years? Has it been good or has it been evil? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to do evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authorities? Do what is good, and you will have the praise from the same. And listen, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. That's the badge, that's the gun, uh, that's the jail cell. For he is God's minister, he is God's minister, an avenger, God's avenger, to execute wrath on him who practices evil. They are to shut down evil. Did Obama shut down evil? No. He perpetrated it. He pushed it. He encouraged it. Hillary Clinton says, I'm going to do like Barack, only more. I'm just going to follow along. No, Donald Trump is the right person. God sees what's coming. 
And anybody with any kind of spiritual aptitude could see what's been fomenting and trying to come. And I have to say, it's only the prayers of the saints why it didn't. And if we choose wrong, we're going to open up a portal for this other spirit on top of what Obama did. Another one carrying something else to come and sit in that seat as that governing authority and release something on us. And if they're perverted, if they're a perversion, that that sword that they're entitled to carry may be a sword that comes on the house of God when it's supposed to be a sword on the house of wickedness. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. For he is God's minister, right? The governing authority is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Now, it went a lot longer than, uh, than I expected. Really, I just wanted to touch on that segment. Why? Because we are told that we are to intercede for all men, right? That we are to, we are to intercede with every kind of prayer for the, for the governing authorities because God's desire is that all men, all men, pray for all men with every kind of prayer because I want them to be saved. Therefore, you've got to also do something about the governing authorities. What do you think prayer is about? You think prayer is just about, hey, just whatever, it'll flow downhill, flow downhill. Dead fish float downhill. You know, I could talk about other things, but I'm not going to. Thank you, Jesus. You understand? Dead things, dead decay gets stinky. So anyway, beloved, one of the reasons I will be voting for Donald Trump. And again, some of the pastors are worried about speaking up that have some insight on this because they're afraid of losing their 501c3, which came in with Lyndon Baines Johnson. What else came in with Lyndon J Baines Johnson? The ungodly welfare system that we have. He stifled the church from speaking out as salt and light. And he brought in an ungodly welfare system. Well, wait a minute. We're supposed to take care of the poor and needy. Yes, we are, but not like that. Not a system that lets people sit idly. Remember what I said about Sodom, the sins of Sodom. They had a bunch of things and they had idleness. Idleness. We saw a change in that in the time Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House, Ronald Reagan was President, and uh, Tip O'Neill, I think it was Tip O'Neill, was the Democratic leader. And they got together and they began to reform welfare. And what they did was they said this. They said, you got to do some work to get get some of this money. And if you don't have skills to get to work, we're going to pay for you to get trained so you have skills so you can get your own substance. Many people came out and they're not stuck to a welfare check. They're not stuck to only just what the food stamp allows you to buy or only just that amount for food a month. I mean, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. How can you do it? I mean, the cost of food goes up and up and up. I don't know how they do it. So anyway, so that ungodly system came in. What else did that ungodly system do? That ungodly system, because it paid you better to not have your husband in the house. Many people that found themselves in that position, the husband went out of the house and the wife was there. Well, they're, they're away from each other, man. Things, things are happening, right? It, it began to destroy uh, people in the in in the American community, Amen. And it began to cause all this that had been uh, being brought together began to be pulled apart, and um, and our inner cities decayed. And as the sin increased, the the portals of hell opened up even more on them, and uh, and then just went in and did devastation. Well. One of the things that has to happen for reformation in those areas is we've got to have a leader 
who understands the purpose of the sword um, and brings order and peace and so that the rest can go back into those places and do what they need to do. So anyway, this Apostle Rich Thomas in uh, number one, I'm voting for Donald Trump, not Hillary Clinton. Sorry, no Clintons. Wicked. Be blessed. Talk to you later. Oh, let me say one other thing. Do we know what Donald Trump will do? No, we only know what he say. Do we know what Hillary Clinton will do? Yeah, because we have 30 and 40 years of history. Whatever she says out of her mouth, she doesn't do. All the promises, it doesn't get done, doesn't happen. She does nothing but get rich. She hasn't had a real job. She's, it's government money has paid her. Taxpayer money has paid her all the time, yet they have accumulated $250 million that we know of, and there's other things that we don't know of. So she got off her position. She has enriched herself. And if you think that she's going to do something for you, you're deceived. Donald Trump will put him to the test. We'll put him in. I believe he's going to do what he's going to say. It isn't going to end just if he gets elected. It's going to be a spiritual warfare to stop the downward spiral of this country and turn it around. There's going to be a warfare. He's still going to have all kinds of resistance within the bureaucracies and within the representative body that sold themselves out. Not all of them have. But there's many that have sold themselves out to the same global interests. What I mean by global interests? I mean people that don't care about America and Americans, which is the responsibility of the civil government and the sword to keep you safe, to keep the peace so there can be prosperity in the midst. That's their responsibility. They don't care about you. They'll go any place else to make their money. They'll let you fall apart and make their money someplace else. That's what we've already got a generation of in the United States of America. Them lining themselves and letting you fall in decay. And it isn't just, it isn't a party. It's the weakness of men within men of all parties. That they would chase material. That they would set themselves as a place of service to us and do nothing but think about lining their own pockets. Of course, they look for silver words, how they'll talk to you about, well, we did it because of this. And we're being manipulated, people. We're being, you know, um, you know what? Witchcraft is, there's different aspects of witchcraft, but basically witchcraft comes through words. It can come through items. It can come through, uh, you know, divination, false speech, you know, wrong by the wrong spirit speaking things, uh, evil spirit speaking things out of people. But there, then you get to the power arm. And, wow, the power arm. I'll tell you what, I can turn on a couple cable news stations, even affecting the other third major one, even now. And the power of witchcraft on that right now, I'm telling you, I don't know how the person without Jesus Christ can even, for a moment, survive. Uh, listening to these people, um, the devil's riding them and using them, man. And what an ugly day, judgment day will be for them. But, but witchcraft, it comes through words. It it comes, it comes to manipulate you, right? So words, words, actions to manipulate you, right? To intimidate you, right? To cause fear to come so that you back off. Its ultimate goal is to control you. It wants to control you to get you to do whatever it wants to do. Okay? So I, you know, I'm not saying these things to make you afraid. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I'm not afraid. It's a matter of fact. It's just the way it is. It's just spiritual realities. And if we succumb to those things, working right now through the media and make the wrong choice, that spirit is going to sit in the White House because it's that spirit 
that's riding on a person, empowering that person to go to that seat. And we will, in effect, release it upon this land on top of everything else that's already been released. Whereas, perhaps the Lord has heard the cry of his people. Have we not said for years, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves. Amen? Seek me. Seek me with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their face. Seek me. Call on me. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. Have we all prayed in vain? Do we not have faith that God has heard our prayer? Do we not have any faith that at least he's heard something? Do we not have any faith that he's heard something of our cries, of our groanings? And he sent some help. The help has begun to come. Amen? Not just physical in rulers, but also angelic. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And that's it. He hears our cries. He answers our prayers. We've got to continue to press in because we, we I perceived several years ago on the verge of destruction, even maybe up to two years ago. And then a short while around that time, I saw the beginning of slowing and the beginning of turning. But that's in the spirit. In the physical, bad things were still happening, evil things, undescribable. And then... I began to perceive my spirit that God desired and wanted to send a reformation, an awakening, if you will, a, a, a quickening. And the thing is, if we just stop and live in ease again, it's going to go all down again. We have to continue to show God we're serious. We have to continue to press in. Amen. We got to continue to hold on to the hem of his garment for the blessing, for the blessing. Amen. Until God turns this nation back to himself, this people. Amen? Until we finish our mission, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations, including the United States of America. And I have to say, the gospel that's preached in America, the biggest majority of it is no gospel at all. It's a false gospel. Full on the airwaves. A false gospel. Not all of it. Not every one of them. But most of them have a false gospel. When there's never a mention of repentance for the remission of sins, and there's never a mention of eternal judgment, that's a false gospel. That is not the gospel of the kingdom. When there's never a mention that God's coming and his wrath will be upon the wicked, that's a false gospel. You see, from love all the way to wrath. Because of wrath, because God saw the end, what the judgment would be in the wrath. Therefore, he said, I have a plan of action. I will send my son. God so loved the people. He sent his son so that whoever would believe in him, what? That he sent his son Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah of Israel, and all nations that believe in Him. All people that believe in Him, the Savior. No matter what your past, He took your sins upon Himself on the cross with His shed blood. He has taken away and served the legal justice of God. And given the one that believes his own right standing so that you can enter in and have a relationship with God as your father. And we plead and beg be reconciled to God because he's appointed a day where he will judge and prove it by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All will be judged. Those who died will be raised to be judged. Those who are alive will be judged. There is no escaping the judgment. So anyway, beloved, praise God, I'm going to end this now. The kids are playing next door on the trampoline or whatever, going a little, little wild over there. 
Oh, this is longer than what I expected, but glory be to God, that's the way it is. And whatever the Lord wants is done. And I'll get back to this again. And I have some other segments I touched on in here that I'm that I'm going to go. I'll pull out some scriptures for you and uh, share that with you again. So anyway, God bless. Apostle Rich Thomas. Hey, America, let's turn back. Remember what Jesus said. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, two times. What did he say? Uh, Unless you repent, you will perish. What was it? The story, these people, they're given an offering. They're given a sacrifice to God. And in come the soldiers. They slay them. And their blood mingles with the blood of the offering. Oh, that's a terrible thing. That's an accursed. That's an accursing. Mingling. Uh, the blood offering, right? And and they the people said, what happened? What happened? They're doing a good thing to God. And the man, they came in, they got slain. What happened? Um, the tower falls down. The tower falls down on these people, kills them. Uh, and all the people, who sinned? Well, they, Tell us, Jesus, was it their own sin or was it their father's sin? And in both cases, this is what Jesus said to them. He said, you're, you're not asking the right thing. The right thing to ask is, where were they with the living God? He said, no. He said, I, I'll tell you what the real thing is. The real question, the real statement, the real answer, the real thing that you need to be aware of, where your emphasis really needs to be is in this. Unless you repent, you'll perish just like them. Jesus said it. It is a false Jesus that people proclaim another Jesus, not that there is any other. A devil, a demon Jesus that doesn't have repent or perish as part of its gospel proclamation. Beloved brethren, and what's repent the beginning and what's perish? It means dying in sin. It's not. He didn't say, let's repent, you'll die. Everybody's going to die. He said, Unless you repent, you'll perish. Perish. Go into etern eternity without God and into the suffering wrath, the lake of fire, forever and forever and ever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations. And then the end. So, Lord, thank you that you give us more time to preach the true gospel of the kingdom to all nations, right here in America and all other nations. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you. Give us time. So be blessed. God bless you. Till next time, this is Apostle Rich Thomas. Bye-bye now.